time for the Bear News with George Partos. And good evening. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of the Bear News. I'm your host, George Pardos, and stay tuned for an entertaining evening. So the news of the day, the first news of the day, is the Bears, the Bears, uh, lost on what has to be the worst field goal um, performance in Scott Norwood. So... That basically, Bear Nation is absolutely just kaflumped tonight about what is going on with the, um, you know, their view of football. But one of the things that I that I want to um, talk about tonight, and there's numerous things, and uh, other than you know, uh, than the re- the regular stuff and football, um, there's a lot of nonsense going on, and, and it just it. It just seems that every week we get into more and more really, um, I don't know what you, what you want to call it, uh, really stupid nonsense. Um, and it, it is just interesting to see how, you know, the, the some of the crazy nonsense shit that's going on. So the, the government is shut down right now. It, that's right now that, that is at the top of the list. The, the government is shut down. Now, Part of this is is based on the you know the the Trump the, the Trump administration wants a wall. Now, one of the things that is really kind of um, I want to I want to point this out, and I know this is you know par- partly going to be an unpopular opinion, but we need to build a wall. Now, part of the part of this is. And I, I want to say this, and, and I hope it comes across in context. Part of the the reason we need to build a wall it's it's, it's the symbolism behind it, and and when I say the symbolism, I, I mean the exact. That's exactly what I mean. Part of the wall is that you have a physical barrier to, to get in, and everybody is going to argue about this and in different you know in different uh, ways. But one of the things that I I want to point out is the fact that you know physical barriers do work. Now, if you are if you're going to go sit and and talk about building the wall, we're not talking about building the wall like the you know like the Chinese did in the Great Wall of China. But even though you know you can argue about the wall, the Chinese don't have any Mexicans. Um, but the the wall is a part of it is is a physical barrier part of it is a security element and part of it is symbolic now and what i say that is, is it, it's a there's a physical barrier to get in now one of the the issues that has happened and and i and i say this with um to we've argued this on, on my show numerous times since 1965 immigration has changed and it and it's changed dramatically on what it was 50 years ago, 40 years ago. Since 1965, the number one, the number one group of people that have came into the United States have been Mexicans. That, those are that is the lead amount of of immigration has come from Mexicans. Now, why is that? Now, part of it is because there's a a border um, in the there's. A, a lot of the the immigration has changed. Now, here here's one of the things that I, that I want to point out. There's a lot of the the left, and this is where I, I say this in, in, and I'm not you know I'm not trying to say that the left is you know that, that doesn't want to fix immigration, doesn't want to you know do this, and it it to them it's become symbolic that they're 
the symbolism behind it is let's just have you know let's not build the wall because it's ineffective we can use drone technology which is one of their arguments this is pelosi's argument but there's a place in in where 10 in new mexico is, is at the border it's only about 20 less than 20 miles there's a lot of of cargo that gets across now whether it's human cargo whether it's drugs illicit transportation now here here's what the democrats and the republicans are not saying to you roughly 46 percent of all illegal aliens in this country flew in now, they're not saying that to you everybody and and this is because the current the currency of every politician is votes that's a currency it's not money it's not it, it is to, to a certain extent but their currency is votes they need your vote they don't care about most of them don't care about money there, there are some of them that do they don't care about your well-being they don't care about you as a person to say you know that uh, you know that they care about you know let's say I'm gonna use Brenda because I, I love that name Brenda uh, essential oils won't fix that Brenda um, but they don't care about you personally. They care about your vote. They care about what will entice the average American to vote. That's what they care about. They don't. They don't care about the the actual the the issue. They care about what will it take for the average American or their voter in their district to vote them in. Now, if you think about that for a second, this is why you have some batshit crazy politicians that get elected. Let, you know, Nancy Pelosi comes from a, 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 a district in California that has voted her in, I, I think, like, I, I don't know, just a, 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 long, a, a long time. I mean, she has had, and she has had literally um, people that are, you know, the Asbury Park and, and the people that are down there in San Francisco that voted her in, and those people are just as let's say leftist as she is now is she a good person i don't know i i mean um my cousin who's a congressman had to deal with her he was when he was in congress um he said he, she was actually a pretty decent person but here's the thing again her currency is a a vote at the polling booth that that's what her currency is so she is going to be in for symbolism let's not build the wall you know america's a free you know a free country and so on Here's part of the issue that Americans on both sides could agree on. We don't want unfederated immigration. We don't. We, we want to have people that can add to the society. Now, does that mean every once in a while we have to stop some immigration? Sure. Part of the reason is that one of the arguments has, has been is we, need, we do need workers. Now, I will say this, and we've had arguments on this. There is no, I've studied numbers, I have a master's in public policy, I've done data sets on this. There is no concise number or whether illegal immigration is a net positive or net negative. And I'm going to say this again. If somebody is telling you that immigration is positive for the United States, it brings in more money than it, it, than it takes out, or it takes more money to come in than it takes out, don't believe them. There, there's no, I, I've studied the ones from Pew Research, from the so Southern Polity, uh, Policy uh, Law Center, from um, Heritage Foundation, from every group, both on the left and the right, has, has came up. They, their numbers are just, they're not congruent. Here is what economists will say. Anytime you dilute, anytime you dilute the workforce, it is going to be a net negative in the marketplace. And, and what do I mean by that? So if you have, let's say you have 100 jobs, I mean, let's just keep it simple. If you have 100 jobs and you put them in a geographical area, and it doesn't matter what, what area, let's just use Dallas, Texas, um, and you put jobs in, in Dallas and you bring in low paying workers, then you're diluting the workforce. Now, what does that happen? Well, what that means is that you have 
that you there's a downward force on wages. Now that that is a that is a tried and true model of economics that has been around for I, I don't know whatever you want to call it about a hundred years and actually it's it's been around since Engels and Marx and all of them that you know we've all need always needed cheap labor and that's how one of the communist um, the Marxism and communist dynamic was brought out because they used to use. Uh, child labor to make matches. They used to use child labor to make glass, and their argument was, "Well, we need cheap labor in order to do so because we we don't want, as consumers, we don't want we want cheap goods. We don't want to pay exorbitant money for goods, and that has been one of the downwards pressures in a society of labor. So what happens? Well, here's the other thing." And and this is the the exact opposite of it. If you have cheap and efficient cheap efficient labor, the people that have a little bit more skills are able then to go out and get a better paying job. So I'll give you an example, and and hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't, man, sorry. Five hundred years ago, I. No, let's just use 500, not, not four. Let's use any, any time in the 1600s. Your IQ didn't matter. And, and, and I'm going to say this again. Your IQ in a society 400 years ago didn't matter. Why? Well, what was the difference between an IQ of somebody that had a farm that had 120 IQ and, 100, and an 85 IQ? Not much. You still had, to, you know, you had a mule... You had a plow, you had a, you know, you had to feed your family, you had to go out deer hunting. Yeah, maybe you can, you know, have a little bit more stealth and, and all that. But for the most part, IQs didn't matter. They, they just didn't. They, they were, they're incidental. They, you know, one smart guy and one dumb guy trying to both feed his family by catching fish, hunting deer, you know, bringing in, you know, a great, you know, having a, building a log cabin. Okay, maybe a little bit. Um, you know, you, you instead of measuring twice, you only had to measure once and cut once. I, I mean, it, it just didn't matter. Today, though, it's a big difference. People with higher IQs actually make more money. I mean, th- th- there is a correlation to that, believe it or not. So, with that being said, somebody that has a low IQ, you don't want a, a rocket scientist going out and picking cotton. You, you just don't, or picking strawberries, or doing whatever else you want. You want either automation to do it, or you want low-wage personnel doing low-wage human capital. If you don't have that, then this is what this is what arises from it. Um, and and I this is to Michael Bialis. You're you're pretty you're pretty well right. A, a Democrat wants your vote and your money. And here's here's what happens with this. This is what happens with you know the votes and everything else is, is going on. People want to have there. There's a thing in. I'm going to explain. I, I want to explain some ter- technical terms first before I go on. In in this debate, there's things called exclusion and inclusion classes. Okay, this is something that that isn't that is not taught. And this is why I think we have some of these debates. An exclusion class is people that you leave out of the conversation. An inclusion class is people you bring into the conversation. So exclusion class, best way I can describe it is the um, some of the Jim Crow laws that we had in the United States. The exclusion class was black people. We didn't let them participate in certain aspects of society in the South. Inclusion class, well... The inclusion class is the people that you include in. Now, one of the reasons, and I will say this, one of the reasons why socialism, the isms, well, other than capitalism, the the communism, socialism, um, Marxism, why that is attractive to people is the following, and, and I need to explain this. Because... They people believe their class is the one that's going to be on top. 
and and th- they think that they're going to be the excluded class. So, for example, they think the 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 left thinks that the elite, the 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 people that are smarter, are going to be that exclusion class that gets all the jobs or the positions of power. Why? Because they're smarter. Doesn't work that way, by the way. Just so you know. Um, and then you have their the people in capitalism, which is by far the best best system the world has ever seen is capitalism. They have they want to include everybody. Their inclusion class is everyone. They want to bring in they you know they don't want to have exclusion classes in capitalism. They don't want to say no, you don't get to participate in, in capitalism. You get everybody gets to to participate. You know we don't care the color of your skin. Um, Capitalism is is literally colorblind. They don't care if you're female, male, um, black, white. You know, because why? We want they capitalism wants you to be part of that class. They want you to be in that class. They want you to to be. They want you to participate. So there's no exclude for the most part today. I'm not talking about 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Today there are very few exclusion classes in, in capitalism. There, there's a, a a line in Greek today, that, and it has been used around for the last thirty years. And the line in Greek goes, "Ge yifti echune portofoli tora," which means even the gypsies have a wallet today. And it, and why is that important? Well, I will tell you this: in Eastern Europe, um, in the Balkans. Um, you know whether it's it's Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, um, Albania, Kosovo, all, all those countries, the former Yugoslavian states. There is no hated group more than the Gypsies. Gypsies are the Alabama fans of the United States. That's the best way I can I can describe it. They are the the they are the worst people in. Um, you know they they're the the you know the worst um they're the worst people on on the planet just far um and they are based uh, on the and they are they're they're just horrible human beings and here's the you know here's the issue with it um when you have these classes when you have these inclusion classes they are absolutely. Um, they, they they don't want to. Um, there's nobody that they want to. Uh, dis, you know, not include. Why is that important? Well, because here here's the thing about uh, here's the thing about um, inclusion. It, you know, basically the the way you you stop wars, and you you stop the the you know you. To stop the antagonism in our societies, you basically make everybody middle class. And the reason middle class, um, the the reason the middle class is shrinking in, in, in the United States is because I mean is because people are becoming upper middle class. So I want to welcome Nicole. How you doing today? I'm good. Can you hear me? Um, can hear you just fine. How you doing? Um, oh, I'm good. What about now? Am I good? Yeah, you're still good. So. Okay. Cool. The the argument of the week has been, and I, I was trying to explain part of it. The argument of the week has been the wall, the government shutdown, and everything else, and also um, Alexandra Cortez taking office. The fact that uh, you know she's got an Instagram video where she's dancing, um, basically all the nonsense of the week. So you have had some very, and you know. I don't know, you want to call it interesting um, conversations with people, especially on my news feed, because I have some jackasses um, as friends. Um, what do you think about everything that's going on, starting with the yeah, wall yeah, first? Yeah. Okay, I, you're, you're cutting in and out. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear anything of what you just said. Okay. One of the things that you've had an argument with this week has been with some of the jackasses that I deal with. Um, and, you know, basically the wall and everything else. What do you think about, first of all, what do you think about the wall? I think it's a...
Okay, you broke in, and, and I think that part of it is, okay, say that one more time. Okay. Can uh, hold on. Nope. <laughs> no, that's not working. Hey, oh, hold on. Um, do me a favor. I'm going to give you, um, let's switch to audio. Um, I'm going to give you my call-in number. Call-in from audio, so because I think the video part is just not wor uh, not working okay so i'm gonna hang up okay. on you and i'm wait, gonna well, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute it seems to be doing fine now i moved closer to my um my router so okay that, that's working yeah, yeah yeah now you're now you're good now i don't have any problems <laughs> okay so what do you think about the wall uh how do i feel um i think it's a waste okay um it's not going to do what uh it's it intended to do yeah, hold on a second. Um, okay. Go to audio only because I think the video part oh. is is uh, cut. The, turn the video down. And I apologize to you guys that are listening. Sometimes it's the the Skype burns up a lot of bandwidth and it is just not friendly. Um, okay, that's better. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so anyway, going back to this. Um, I, what do you think about the wall? Okay, so, so I honestly, I think it's a waste of money. It's not going to, uh, do what it is intended to do. It's not going to keep people from crossing the border illegally because the most majority of the illegal immigrants that are in the United States right now are here on expired visas. So, and I covered walls, that and I covered that and, it, it, you know, it's about 46% of them are, um, coming in here by airplane. What I was saying is one of the arguments that they, that I've had, and I, and I've had both sides of this, and this is where it's kind of important. Um, there's a lot of symbolism to building the wall. And I think that is one of the, why it's a focal point. Uh, do you think, let me ask you a question. Sure. Do you think that as a group, you ought to say, Hey, listen, let's build a wall in some places. Let's fortify it because we do need some some physical security and at the same time let's work on building uh bringing in some um some countermeasures for the immigration problems that we've already had which is we have 11 million i think close to 11 million illegals here or 12 million mm -hmm. um and let's figure out a way to to fix that problem as well do you think that that's that maybe if we both work, both sides work together, that maybe that would help the the conversation. Um, yeah, absolutely. I feel like both sides want border security, and the Democrats are willing to say yes. We need to reinforce some parts of the border, and yes, we need to figure out you know a way to resolve the issue about the illegal immigrants already in this country, but we fundamentally disagree with Republicans on how to go about doing that. And that's where we keep getting stonewalled. And that's why, you know, nothing has been done about this is because we agree on, on border security. We just disagree on how to go about achieving that. All right. Well, okay. Let's, let's do that. How would you start with how, what would be a, a, a compromise solution on the border security and the other? I don't it's 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 very hard to come up with a reasonable solution because to me personally I don't have a problem with illegal immigrants or immigrants coming into this country. I don't I don't feel like there should be I'm not going to say open the borders completely to anybody and everybody that, that is coming in. We definitely need to vet people before they come into this country. But the illegal immigrants that are already here, I, we need to put them on a path to citizenship. I mean, they were here, you know, already. And they were functioning members of society. But now they're, you know, they don't want to go back home because it's life in America is better than where they came from. So why not give them the option to become American citizens if they're already here and they're already willing to work and they're already willing to do what it takes to live and function in America it just doesn't make any sense to me to deport them and kick them out where you know like where are they coming from well war-torn impoverished 
countries, and it just does It's not fair, I don't think, to kick them out. Well, and and here's the thing: I don't think, you know, with the exception of a couple people um, on that are here illegally, um, the drug dealers and the, the people that are doing human trafficking. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't have an issue with any of them, you know, with some of them staying here. Here's the thing mm-hmm. we do. We do need, you know, we do need comprehensive, um, uh, you know, some comprehensive, um, let's say immigration reform. I mean, that, that no one is saying that, but I think, I, I think the argument is that we have got in, in Washington DC right now, such a stagnant, group of of people that no one is winning you're talking about in congress on both sides like we're just... oh no 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 i'm not talking about just one or the other both of them i mean i i'm, I'm saying both both people on you know both sides are having issues with it they, they no one is both sides are being obstinate and i, I... I see what you're saying. So you're within the Democratic Party and within the GOP individually, they're having issues coming to a compromise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. I have a husky and she's anxious right now. <laughs> oh. I don't know. See, I just, um, I just, the, you know, like going back to the wall, the wall full circle, it's just, it, it was a marketing gimmick. That's all it was. And that's what, Trump campaigned on and so that's what he's going to you know try to ensure happens because that is one of the primary reasons why he got elected and I don't know if you've if you've read Omarosa's uh, book called Unhinged but she explains in that book how you know he he would be at his rallies and he would you know, the, the crowd would would start to become dull and there would be, you know, less energy. And so he would bring up the wall and he would bring up, you know, he would start chanting about build the wall, build the wall. And what it would do is energize the rallies and then in turn would energize his base. And it was it is literally a marketing gimmick. And what really, really, really frustrates me is that Republicans refuse to see that they are. And most of it is an I can you can you can you can bring it back to education one of the, the the biggest differences between the GOP party and and the Democrats is your education level and I mean that's been proven time and time again and so you know when you don't have that real world um, yeah but I mean part of that but part of the and, and you know let's say that but part of the the thing is that you know one of the issues that you had in the last election let's be honest about this one of the le- you have a, a certain elitism on the left that say, "Hey, we are better educated than you. You just don't know." But then you have Charlie down the street saying, "Hey, I'm fixing your car, um, and your degree in English literature isn't necessarily going to put bra- put you brakes on your car." They, I, 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 we've had this argument ad nauseum on this. Is that mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think that you you are correct about that. You do have some left, you know, some left, you know, people on the left that are leaning on, you know, that are more educated, but at the same time, you have, you know, there, there's a test that they give is, do you live in a bubble? And, you know, part of the, part of the thing is that, that when you say, you know, that most America, or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, 33 out of the 3,600 people, 3,600 counties in America are mostly blue collar. So, yeah, you're, you're right. There, more people are educated, but if you take a look at it, here's one of the issues on on that ar- that argument. The six six out of the ten largest cities in the United mm-hmm. States, bar none, are Democratic mayors. And, and hold yep. on, I, I, and I'll say six of the f- four or five of the ten largest cities are Democratic mayors, or, or the most um, let's say the most prosperous uh, cities in America are democratic mayors okay but guess what three of the five top democratic mayor um cities have um, they lead the nation I, i'm going to stop it right there i'll tell you they lead <laughs> they lead the nation in wealth and equality the menlo park the menlo park california the mayor of menlo park has the richest gdp in the in the united states but also has more people in his 
county that are literally homeless and working homeless than any other place in the United States. So, yeah, you're right. Democrats, here, here's the thing, the argument. Democrats have no problem with elitism as long as their people get the, the money and then the, the poor people just get screwed. That's one of the arguments, and, and that is a, no one has an answer for that. And I'm not saying that, I'm, I'm, and I, I totally understand it, is that, yeah, you know, you can defend that the, you know, that the, the left are more educated, but that doesn't always mean that they serve the society better. No, and you're absolutely right. And and the left is stop. The left is definitely, um, you know, they 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 use that elitism and they flaunt it, and they don't know how to um, connect with the blue collar workers. And it's a huge issue within the left because, and I honestly do believe, one of the reasons why Hillary Clinton lost was because of that reason. You know, she sat there and called half the nation deplorables, a basket of deplorables. And so, what do you do? with that you know that's not making a connection with all of america that is primarily connecting with the half of america that you want to connect to and so you when you think about you know paul campaigning specifically campaigning um it's important for the democrats to uh try to connect with those blue collar workers and the you know the patriots of america and instead of you know, using identity politics and and connecting with the minorities because my, minorities are you know primarily they vote Democrat. So one of the things you said in it was that you know the Democrats they they focus on this elitism and they're only looking out for their own. But I I have to disagree and say that's on that's on both sides. I mean if you if you look at Trump he he refused to you know, let go of his business ties. And and then he finally did, even like he was forced to, but he still is tied to his businesses and he's still making money off of his businesses. And so, you know... Ha- sure, I, I, I have... Cab- sure, I have no... There's majority of the cabinet members right now are... I have no issue with it. I have no issue with it. CEOs of, you know, major, major corporations. And so it's like, well, they have no experience. They're just CEOs that Trump knows. Right. But I mean, let's, okay, let's, let's flip the script for a second. Nancy Pelosi has 174,000 a year salary and is worth 196 million. One of those contracts that she got was a visa contract for, um, for the visa business, uh, visa credit cards in her district. Now, I'm not saying that that's, that's, but I'm saying at that level, you're going to do business. Um, Mitch McConnell, give you another prime example. Uh, hundred, you know, he makes 174,000 years worth 26 million, um, and in and in 10 years, his net worth went up by 10 million dollars. Now, I, <clears throat> if you're going to sit there and say, yeah, as politicians. Um, you know, Obama, while he was in office, he was he was still getting money from uh, the audacity, uh, you know, the dreams of my father, audacity of hope. I, do you, how do you, you know, your money's supposed to go into blind trust, but at the same time, you, we've we've gotten to the point in politicians that when they're in office, they get, they're going to earn money. Um, John Glenn, let's get, you know, prime example, when he was senator, um, and he was making $2 million a year on dividends, which means that if you just take a look at, at you know, at, at regular stock, and I, I'm not saying that it, it's he's better or worse than anybody, but just regular stock dividends, he would have a net portfolio of probably $30 million to make that. I, I'm just saying that I understand it, that the issue behind it, but when you're talking about having people in business, and people in Congress, people at the in the cabinet, um, everybody that's in the cabinet, either bought their way in or nepotism their way in, and it doesn't matter whether it's Democrat and or Republican. I, I mean, and that's and and I, I. Here's the thing: I'm okay with that. I, I don't care that if 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 Obama hired Tim Cook to run our. You know, to run a the 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 commerce department, I'd have no issue with that. Let bring him on. I I mean, it is. I I think that the idea of of electing a or putting somebody that's 
that has no experience in a, in a position where you're one of maybe 30 people in the country that are running the country, I I, I, I don't have an issue with that. I don't, I don't care which side it is, whether it's, you know, whether, um, you know, Paulson, you know, there's an argument when Paulson took $487 million under the Bush um, administration to become secretary, uh, secretary, he got that free and clear. Um, I, I, I don't have an issue with that. I mean, do you think, do you see where I'm Can going? You, yeah, I do. I mean, it's, Stop. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. um, can you, you you can hear me, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't I don't know if I necessarily agree with you. And I mean, it's hold on one second. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so uh, my issue is is being elected or being appointed into these positions without an experience, and that's what bothers me the most. We look at Betsy Devos. She has absolutely no business running the education department at all she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing she never has she wants to privatize sure. school and that it like the only reason why she was appointed as a cabinet member as the department you know the education department head was was because she was a, a business partner with trump and so that's and where you have to draw the line. Exactly. And, and that's and that's where you have to draw the line. It's like you can be a business person and 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 make money off of your your businesses and and your, you know, outside politics, but do you have experience to run to be in the position that you are in? And if you look at Trump's cabinet members, how many how many can you say are deserve to be in those positions? Hardly any. And that's that is and that is and, 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 institution right now and that is the you know that is a problem now in in saying though sometimes i think you've got to you've got to put people in positions where um um where you've got to put some people in a position where you trust them also because you know let, let's take a look at, at at trump's you know at uh now, Steve Nunchen is secretary uh, secretary of the Treasury. He is actually not a bad not a bad guy, um, but at the same time, he was the you know the uh, One West Bank CEO. Um, that is a, you know that is a problem. Uh, Wilbur Ross, Secretary of Commerce. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he is uh, you know that that can be a a problem but if you take a look at some of the other people that he's got in office secretary of energy rick perry former governor of texas that's not not the worst person to be in there um you know and if you you go take a look and and you know the secretary of labor is alex acosta used to be the u.s attorney uh sonny Perdue, secretary of agriculture used to be a governor you're right about that, but here here's one of the things that that I, I'm gonna I have to say is that in in picking people for a cabinet, I I just don't think that there's as many candidates out there as you think there are. Yeah, I think part. Go ahead. Well, one of one of the things that you, you nobody wants to work with Trump because Trump represents the the worst of America and. When you, I, I read Omarosa's book, when she mentioned, she talks about how it was very, very difficult in the beginning of the presidency because they had 5,000 positions that they needed to fill and nobody, nobody wanted to work for I, him. I don't, I don't, nobody. I don't believe that because I, 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 here's the reason why. I think a lot of that is press. I, I honestly, and because, you know, the, this is, I, I think a lot of that is press. I don't think is, that people didn't well, want. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, it's not. It's well, and that's what. Here's yes, what. Yeah, right. and, 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 are like the the lowest level of you know working in the White House. But one of the other things that I was going to mention is that you know you have so many people that have been out of the Trump president the administration. Like how many people have been either 
they've either resigned or they've been fired or, you know, they've been asked or forced to leave. And it's unprecedented in this administration, the amount of turnover that we've gone through. And that is partially, I think, because Trump has no political experience. And that's what you get when you don't have political experience is that you don't have as many people to pick to be able to put into those positions because they deserve to be there. You know, like the, pol- the politicians like Rick Perry that have been put into those positions, okay, so they're not the best people to be put into those positions, but at least they have some kind of political experience. You know, and so that's that is my whole issue with the whole administration right now is that is is none of them have the right or deserve to be there because they don't know what the hell they're doing and this is why we sure. are where we are sure but at the same time i mean let me give me an idea let, let's let's pick an administration from 1955 on you know post-war and, and and tell me one administration that you think they put qualified people in positions i i'm going to give you an example I, I'm going to give you an example for a second, and then I. So, um, Bill Clinton um, had a chief of staff, okay, and um, so let me pull up his name. Um, so, th- this is now, mind you, I know that you uh, you probably weren't a follower of bill clinton because no, you're like no. like you're like five but <laughs> I, yeah. but but here here i, I want to give you an example uh for, bill clinton's first chief of his staff was a guy by the name of mac mcclarty okay mm-hmm. and mac mcclarty is a is the best way i can describe him he's a putz okay so bob carey who is the senator from nebraska was at the white house now this is he's a dem- fellow democrat in the White House, 1993. So he, when uh, there was a, a bunch of the personnel, the Marines and the a couple of the, you know, the, the service member were saluting, um, they were saluting Bob Carey, who was there because he is a Medal of Honor recipient. Okay. Okay. Now, Mac McClarty goes up and asks, um, why are they saluting him and or you know why are they you know snapping too like they're doing for bill and one of the the marine you know one of the officer liaisons said well because he's a medal of honor recipient and he basically said well what is that and <laughs> and, and, and this is this is why leon panetta um wound up replacing him and bill clinton wound up having a much better presidency after Leon Panetta took over and here here's the thing if you take a look at the people that have you know that have gotten to certain positions if you think about it some of those positions garner nepotism I I mean they or, or sycophants you you don't want a president if you're a president you're very rarely you're going to be an alpha male and most people don't want that the the uh, you know that office but you're going to surround yourself with yeah, 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 yeah. and the hardest thing that it, it, to ever do in politics is to s- speak truth to power so i think there's an inherent reason why some of these dynamics go on it's not just because you know people don't want to work, work with trump but trump is an alpha male he's going to yell at you he is going to mm-hmm. you know he's going to use that the you know the the bully um, you know, the, the bully techniques of New York City. Um, number three, you know, he is a big guy. I mean, he's 6'2", 6'3", 240, 250 pounds. And there's, you know, he's going to bully you. I, I think, you know, unlike me, who's short and frail, I think you, you got to take that into, <laughs> you got to take that into account. And I think that that's one of the reasons why that you have, some of the dynamics that you have go on and i and i don't think he look i i know people don't people don't like trump and and that's you know that is one of the issues behind it but at the same time you got to think about this trump has done everything he said he's going to do wants to build a wall well you know mexico's not paying for it but he's going to do this he's going to do that and he's trying to keep a lot of his promises yeah and that's that's what any anybody who voted for him was with the exception of myself you know 
they, he says he's going to do. And in that aspect, he's been a great president. He has. But a lot of his policies, even though, you know, he's he's done a lot of the things that he campaigned on and said that he was going to do, they have underlying negative effects that nobody is talking about and that nobody wants to talk about because ignorance is bliss. And so, you know, you say, well, he's done all of this and he's done this and yeah, that's fine, but at what cost? What 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 is the risk of doing these things? You know, like the trade war that's going on with China currently, that tariffs are not... Right, they and, don't do and, anything. And, and he and he's right about that. That that is one of the the problems he's had. But uh, uh, you know, he is. I, I I no one has. You know, if you took a look at the Taft Harley Act of the nineteen thirties, that's you know that is a prime example of how tariffs don't work. I I think part of it is also grandstanding. I think that you know one of the issues has got to be is that say hey look, um, you know you're going to, you know, you're going to the Chinese, you're going to have to say, hey, you got to follow some direction because we can't just let you run roughshod over our own, you know, our, our own people. Um, you know, they, you know, the, the Chinese don't take intellectual property for serious, um, you know, and they're, and they're also pushing an agenda for, you know, trying to get a seat at the big table and they're not there yet. And I think that that is part of the problem. But there's other things that he's done right. One of the things that, you know, that people are not bringing in about the wall, and, and let's use the, you know, the wall, and let's use a couple other things that he has gotten right. Um, we have the amount of bodies that are being found at the desert, um, in, at the wall, and, 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 you know, the human trafficking is scary. And one of the things that nobody is bringing on is that, Part of the problem with illegal immigration and part of the, you know, the problem with, and it's not, it's not just illegal immigration, but it's in law enforcement is the fact that certain dynamics hurt everybody. And, you know, they, they've, they've found mass graves at the border and, it, you know, nobody is sitting there talking about it. And I, and I think one of the issues that we have, and, and, I, and I say this from, you know, from, from somebody that reads every day and reads different sources, no one is telling the truth about what is going on. And I think that, you know, and that is part of a problem. And I don't know how we fix it. I don't know now with the, the people that we've got in Congress. Boy, howdy, I don't know. I don't know where we go from here. Well, so... A hard time with the left is, and I have a hard time with the right. One of the the the, the problems with the left is they that they're dismissive in certain situations where, hey, look, we want we're we're hypocritical at, at, in in a lot of things. One of the the problems with the right has been is they have the memory of a gypsy moth, and. <laughs> I'll give you a prime example, and this is, a, I'll give you a, a thing. They come out as the party of the, the, the you know, the moral high ground, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and they call, um, you know, they, they have a tendency to call the left snowflakes, right? Which I find rather amusing. But one of the things is, <laughs> like, you know, when Colin Kaepernick took a knee, it wasn't about veterans. It was about saying, hey, listen... We have people in our society I don't we I don't feel are being treated equally, you know and and you know Colin Kaepernick says hey listen I just the guy that told him to kneel was a, a Green Beret a veteran yeah mm -hmm. a veteran and so then they flipped it oh it's what about it's about it's about veterans it's about veterans and you know and so I'm like really it's not about veterans it's about police brutality. Oh no! It's weird how a group of people who uh, constantly harp on Democrats being triggered, constantly triggered, are so triggered by something. You know, <laughs> well, <laughs> that is. I got into it the other day. I had to delete my comment because they just would not stop commenting on it, and I was just like, I, you can't have a conversation with people like that because they just refuse to see it from a different perspective and it it's not good for communication at all 
Right, and and part of the and, and here's the here's the other argument. The left. I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I got into it. Okay, um, I got into it with a friend of mine about the the guy in New Jersey, the the kid in New Jersey that had to cut his hair to wrestle. Okay, and one of the issues that came up, and and this was one of the problems that that I've seen on the left. They, they're they're quicker in some regards, to start doing ad hominem attacks that, you know, they're just like, oh, you know. Yep. And so the guy, Alan Maloney, who is the referee in New Jersey, um, made this kid say, listen, you got a choice. Get an approved headgear or forfeit the match. Or, not an approved headgear, a head covering. Either get an approved head covering or forfeit the match. So the kid had two options, not to let, he, he could either forfeit the match or, or cut his hair in order to fulfill the rules. And the kid chose to cut his hair, which I applaud him for it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, the kid did. But who, the people that are to blame for this are his coach, the athletic director and uh, of the school that he goes to because the, what he was wearing was a Nike beanie. No one wants to admit that the kid did anything wrong. It, oh, the only reason that the kid had to cut was the guy was a racist. Well, maybe. Maybe. I don't know if the guy is or not, but I'm saying, I, I got into it and they were like, oh, you, you know, the rules don't... I said, they, he had to follow the rules. They don't care about that. It's They want an exclusion class when it doesn't suit their need. Instead of saying, hey, you know, the coach and everybody let this kid down, but even though the ref might be a racist, the kid had to follow the rules. And that's the conversations we're having. It's about the feels. And because... And it's not just on the left. I mean, it don't don't get me wrong. The right has its own feels at the same time. Um, that you know they they want to. It, it's like the you know there's. I, I made a post one day and and it, it, it inflamed everybody. But one of the things I said is, hey, um, I didn't almost join the Marine Corps so that Colin Kaepernick could kneel, and you, you should have seen how that went like triggered. Um, I didn't. I did not see that. But oh my God! It was. Look it, now. It, it was hilarious. It was one of the funniest things ever. But here's the thing. I, you know, one of the thing. The, this guy who's not a veteran, who, and, and this is the guy who's not a veteran, said, "Hey, listen, I'm a veteran. I don't care if the guy, if Colin Kaepernick kneels, sits, does the hokey pokey, um, mm -hmm. as long as he doesn't wear a Tom Brady jersey, I don't care what he does." <laughs> But but people associated that with the veterans, and I'm saying, well, wait a second. They're veteran, you know. One of the arguments that happens online, and and I and I've I've argued this all the time is, um, and I've tried to teach people this is there's one of the most common arguments is I'm not a you're, you're I'm not a Scotsman. Now, do you know that? Have you ever heard that in the in logical fallacies? I have not. Okay. One of the, the, um, um, one of the things that is in logical fallacies um, is it, it's called no true Scotsman. Okay, it's an it's a fallacy, it, 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 and so basically, you know, the argument is that um, the most common use of it is he's not a real Christian. Well, a real Christian wouldn't go bomb an abortion clinic. Oh, you know that that's but you know so and so you know that that's one of the the, the things that they use. They it's called an exclusion class. So when you want to exclude somebody from your group or, or from your tribe, you use this example that's no you know no true Scotsman would ever do this. Even though they are part of your tribe, the way you exclude their actions when they're repugnant is use this argument, no true Scotsman. So if you've seen this online, is I, I'll give you an example in the Trump um, in, in the Trump argument is that no true Christian would have an affair with a porn star while married to a you know, to marry to his wife and then pay her off and you know, a real Christian wouldn't do that. You know, mm. so that that's a no true Scotsman argument. And the problem with that is most people aren't smart enough to pick up on that. And you know, the, the, the flip side of that is, you know, we elect you know, people elected Trump to be their president, not their pastor. 
I mean, who cares? You know, you, you, you know, the left didn't care about religion before. All of a sudden, now you're an expert on religion. That that just you know that makes no sense. So that is how we we argue in these fallacies, and why people are um, why people fall into these traps. I don't know. If, do you do you understand what I'm saying now? No, I I totally get it. I do. Um, what were you you What were you talking about before you brought that up? I can't remember. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I had a point that I wanted to fake, and then um, oh, you were talking about uh, Colin Kaepernick, and then what was the other one? Uh, I can't think of it. But anyways, so you you know you you bring up Colin Kaepernick, and I'm kind of glad that you did. But it's it's I that was a huge point in. And I keep referencing this book because I just read it and it was really good. But Amorosa's book was that you know they they wanted to distract their base from and and turn everything into an issue so that they could attack the left. So when Caller Kaepernick knelt, it it wasn't about you know disrespecting America and and the flag and blah 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 blah. But the Trump administration they wanted you to think that and that's what they led with because it was easier to come out and attack the left that way. And I hate this argument so much because instead of looking at the real issue and the reason why he is actually doing it from his own words, this is about, you know, black people in America dying at the hands of white cops. It was, well, this offends me. This hurts my feelings and, and, and the flag. you know, cognitive dissonance comes into play in these types of arguments because it's like, okay, but but if it were you, you know, you go you go into what about isms. If it were you, how would you feel if this happened well, to but you I'm gonna or tell to somebody you, that you know? But, but I'll tell you the reason why what about, you know, the reason, okay. One of the things that's happening, and, and I want to point this out because I know that you're, um, how do I, I, I want to I, I want to frame this before I say it. Part of it is you haven't seen. Well, you're young, and you're part of the the new wave of young voters, and you haven't seen thirty years ago what the landscape was in conversation. And it wasn't until the '80s that you you know the the term political correctness wasn't framed until 1985. And one of the one of the issues that has happened today is. Part of it is the whataboutism has has ro- arisen for two reasons. One is people are hypocritical. So mm-hmm. in one in one example of you you know you take one argument, I I, I don't know, p- pick one. Well, when your party does it, you're okay with it. But when an opposition does it, you are going to base them from you know tar and feather them at the town square. So, and the reason this arises is like, wait a second, your your actions aren't consistent. We don't know where you stand, because one time you're saying, okay, um, it's wrong, but the next time this happens, you're saying it's okay. I, you know, it, it's I, I don't know where you stand, and part of the 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 one of the re, the the reasons you have a co- you know cognitive dissonance is because. The lack of critical skills, the lack of critical, um, you know, critical thinking. So I try to explain this to somebody, and I, it just fell on deaf ears. But I, I'll explain. And, and it was in, in the group with John, and, and I and I could not, oh. and I could not get this point across. One of the things that's happened is sometimes both techniques work, and sometimes they they've worked. Uh, uh, one technique will work. In commerce, and that technique might work today, and it didn't work 30 years ago, and vice versa. So people have seen that technique work, and they go, "Well, why can't it work today?" Well, it's a different economy. Maybe it's it. it you know, there are different reasons why it's going on. So today that might work. Years ago, it might not have worked. And so 
that is one of the problems that people have. They've seen it work before, and they're going, well, why isn't it working now? Well, in order for... <laughs> In order for you to, to understand why it's not working now, you go to go deeper into um, to research. I, I, I'll give you a prime example, and this is, and I remember what I we got into with. In 1961, one of the things that JFK did, and this is a model that has worked since either 36 or 37, um, it, but mostly after World War II was over, is when the short-term bond rate starts exceeding the long-term bond rate it's time to to start looking at the economy and where the numbers are at okay that has worked since after world war ii that has been one of those signs that um it you know things are about to go bad and you have to have a really good deep understanding of economies to understand that so one of the problems has been is that there are times when the short-term bond rate has gone up and we have been perfectly fine. Nothing happened. Nothing bad happened. Give you a prime example, 1996, 97, nothing bad happened. Another time that that happened, 2006, 2007, and then shit hit the fan. So, across all of that, yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that happens, and, and even though it's only 10 years apart, that is... Mm-hmm. That is something that that went bad. Well, here's one of the things that that people have seen is sometimes if a guy takes a right a, a swing at you with a right hand, um, you were you know you try to block it. Other times you lean in. It, it just depends on the on the situations. But most people think, oh, raising the taxes on the rich is going to produce this, or lowering the taxes on the rich is going to produce this. Well. I'll give you an example. In 1946, the Depression ended because we lowered the marginal tax rate on the wealthy. That's what ended the Depression. Now, George Bush did the same thing, and we had a recession. Well, Mm -hmm. we also had 9-11, too, but there are times that techniques work, and and people go, um, okay, well, what else didn't we do? 1961, JFK had the largest GDP production ever of a president. Why? Lowered short-term bond rates, long-term bond rates, raised the minimum wage, and um, and cut taxes. But he did all of those things together. And so the Republicans have talked about lowering taxes. And when you have low un- low inflation, it's okay to cut taxes we're getting to that point right now where inflation is rising it might be a time that we need to start raising taxes the, mm. pr- the problem is that certain aspects or certain dynamics have become have become attached to a party and that's what scares me and that's what bothers me because um, you know th- I don't want the tribal tribal association of of what works for our country. If you know, if lowering taxes is benefits our country, I don't care whether it's a Democrat or a Republican that that, that puts it forward. I just want it to work because I got to share space with all of you. Yeah, but today's day and age, that will never work, and it never will because America is centered on a two party. Even though the founding fathers did not want it to be that way ever that's how it has become and that's the way that it'll always be and i don't foresee you know independent parties becoming the primary candidates for presidency even though it makes sense and i i would agree with you wholeheartedly that it's not you know like because there are certain issues that i agree with on the left and there are certain issues that i agree with on the right and and you know but in order for for a candidate to win (laughs) You know, it has to either go Democratic or Republican because that's because that's how it is. You know, like that's that's just I'm trying to find the words. And that's just how it works is you campaigning on certain issues to, you know, connect to your base. And well, and part of science. it is, <laughs> and part of it, too, is the fact that different, you know, for example, you're in your 20s. The things that are important to me are not as important to you, and vice versa. The things that are important to you is, 
you know, to me, I'm like, eh, eh, all right, eh, I, I don't care. Um, and and so as a result, we have to have a better representation. And here's a, here's the one thing that I've said is that um, politicians, their currency is votes. That's what they want. They you know they they don't care about you personally as you know Nicole. They they just want your vote. And if they can get it mm-hmm. by offering you. Um, you know what I, I don't know season tickets to the Bears they'll they'll do that I mean if they they don't care um, but you know trying to implement it is a different way and, and it's the same thing with and, and here's the one thing I would I would say and this is an unpopular opinion one of the things that Hillary pointed out in her book was that the Bernie Sanders group was very good at at doing the Sololinsky arguments. Um, you know, where every, you know, he promises everybody a pony and she says, well, how do you pay for it? Oh my God, Hillary doesn't like ponies. You know, that, that was the argument that, that it became. And that, and that was one of the issues that she had that, you know, that the Bernie Sanders people were really good at. Now, there are some things that I, I look at as a, as, as a whole, I would like to have more people covered by healthcare. Now there's, I just disagree with the left on how to pay for it, though. See, and that's that's one of the that I I said that earlier is that we fundamentally, or you know, we agree on some things, but fundamentally disagree on how to go about that. And I, for one, am all about raising taxes if it means universal health care, because I feel like everybody has the right to health care, to good health care. And I I know the argument you're going to bring up, but I still I still think that it's a good idea. I didn't, hold, hold on. What, what's the argument I'm going to bring up? Just, just I, I want to hear where you. The think that. altruism of the doctors. Nope, that's not what I'm going to bring no? up. No. Okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> so here, here's I, I'll give you an example. Here, here's what I think about healthcare. Okay, mm-hmm. I think we need to have a system where we have more access to healthcare. Why? Because as a nation, if you have healthier people, you have more productivity. I, I'm, I'm, a, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a greedy pig in that part. Um, the more pe- the healthier people are, the more stuff that they can make, and the more market stuff they can take to market. I'm sorry, that that's the way I feel about that. Um, but the way I, I would go around paying for it is in certain aspects, um, give small business owners a dollar for dollar write off, where if you're you know if you have an employees and you're paying for their health care, um, that gets written off at EBITDA, um, and that's one way of paying for it. They have been most, not all, but part of the the problem with the Cadillac tax is it attacks SEPs, which are self employment plans, um, and you know health health thrift accounts. So with that, it it really hurt some of the small business owners, and part of the business the small business owners' view was it was a punitive attack on business owners because most. Not all, but a majority of small business owners are Republican. Mm, and, I can see that correlation, yeah. And, and I mean, not to say that that it's a viable correlation, but I mean, people thought that, you know, the more Nicolas Cage movies that come out, the more people die in bathtubs. <laughs> and that, and that, and that is one of the, that is one of the, the arguments, because one of the... See, you, you... You you like to bring up these arguments from before I even got into politics. Like I really honestly did not did not start getting into politics until Trump ran for office. And so you you bring these things up and I have no idea. Well I mean I do. I say I have some idea, but you know, like I don't have I, I don't have that experience, and so the only experience that I have is is, is the Trump administration. But you're saying this, and and then I, I you know I, I understand now why Obama was hated so much by Republicans, and, and that's probably one of the reasons. And then you see the same things on, on the Democrat side about Trump and how some of his policies are inherently racist and and misogynistic, so on and so forth. But but Trump was nowhere near Obama in professionalism and. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, going back, going back to the go ahead. No, but I mean, but I'm saying part of uh, part of the Obama administration was mm-hmm. there was a certain level of elitism that they, they, they you know that they were that the you know because part of you know that he was a community organizer. Well, okay, mm-hmm. you know, fine, that's fine. He had four years in the Senate, 
But I mean, Trump had no has had no experience in the in the Senate or in the, in any elected office, mm-hmm. and you know, and part of the you know part of it is that there's some things that Obama did once he was in office that he just wasn't. It, it was a lack of institutional memory, um, and it's the same thing with anybody that takes office. I mean, we haven't had a really good president since I think since uh, George W. Bush forty one. Um, we've had admit, you know, we what we've had up until two thousand for from nineteen ninety three to twenty sixteen, we had twenty three years of administrators. We didn't have a, a true president. Now, part of it is that they, you know, if you take a look at what Bush forty one did, he was an administrator. So was Clinton. So was he was a bureaucrat. I, I, I and maybe let me use that phrase better. Um, they were bureaucrats, and I think that the problem that you have with, the, you know, the problem that you have with Obama was there. There are a lot of the things that he did were just they were administrative nightmares. The the amount of people that got so pissed off and like, why are you having to do this? Um, as far as as you know, it's just bureaucratic red tape, and that's what people got upset with. Um, and and you got to remember too that you know the idea. There is a part of America thought he was a, a Kenyan Muslim. I I have no doubt about that. There are people today that think Michelle Obama was a man. I have no doubt about that. But I, I think a lot of it is has to say with more is he that he was he was referred to as a lot of it was more elite that you know he had that. You know, and, and part of the problem is too, is the one of the issues that's happening, and this is the, the very debatable, is the fact that you take a look at the humanities papers online. Eighty percent of all humanities, uh, you know, uh, papers that are written in universities aren't used for research. I, I mean, aren't used for reference anymore. Uh, only about twenty percent is because now the people in college, and that's what they, you know, they've argued about. Um, they're not doing actual research. They're doing basically narratives, and that's one of the problems behind it. Yeah, but that gives way to, to new research papers, correct or no? I mean, no. What I'm saying is that 80 percent of papers that are written by the humanities professors, which is you know the published, they're not used. <laughs> they're not used for references at all. They they don't nobody references them because they're full of shit. And that and that's an argument. And it, where, you know, twenty five years ago, yes, they were referenced. Today, not as much, because now it, it's you know, professors are writing about the fields. Where you know, Marxism is, and, and I will say this: one of the reasons that Marxism is is being sold so well to to people today, part of the problem is that capitalism has created exclusion classes, which means that they haven't brought people in to be able to do business. And I'll give you the prime example. Years ago, you know who the the smallest group that is is rising in 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 uh in in their own business are is females. We're we're not including them in in businesses. They're not starting businesses at the same level. And so ownership in small businesses has declined. And as a result of that, if you if you're not bringing in people into a system, um, it's like, well, shit, I can't start my own business. I can't have you know, I can't enjoy the fruits of capitalism. I quit. I, I it, you know, socialism sounds a lot better when you have people in Menlo Park that are literally, you know, sit, homeless next to million dollar homes. Um, there's an issue. Yeah, that, that is an issue. You've got to, you, you know, you either got to include them or suffer the consequences. See, and so you, you, you bring up a fact and I just, I want to very basically touch on this because it's the only experience that I have on the subject, but you, you, you talk about Menlo Park and so one of, one of the arguments that I have seen on the Republican side is that, well, I don't want my hard-earned money to go to strangers that I don't
on the streets? No, you're not going to. Why? Because you're a greedy motherfucker. And that's, and I hate that. And that's, that comes full circle back to that humanity thing and the empathy, the lack of empathy is in the cognitive dissonance. Because if it were you or your own, you would be wanting to, you know, you'd be looking for help every single place that you could and you'd be begging for money and asking, you know, for a handout. But you don't, you don't ever, think about yourself being in that sort of position because you don't ever think that it's going to happen to you and 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 that's one of the reasons why I strayed away from the Republican Party is because I started to notice that you know like well what if it were were me and my own what if it was my son what if it was my mother what if it was you know whoever in my family would I take care of them and how would I feel about the situation? Would I still be, you know, feeling the way that I do about not helping out the homeless or immigrants or so on and so forth? And that is one of the biggest differences, I think, between the GOP and the Democrats is that we're d- the Democrats and it comes back to education. It's like I, you, they have the capacity to understand what would happen if it were you or somebody that you know, a loved one. And the Republicans, they just don't have the capacity to understand that and it drives me crazy does that make sense to you yeah and it I comes mean, back to where you were saying menlo park you have homeless people next to 100 million dollar house homes and it's it's sickening it really is because we're not taking care of americans at the lowest level we don't we're, we're forgetting about them and that is an issue you know and so one of the, the very first conversation that we had during this whole thing is is about the wall well and I know $5 billion is pennies compared to, you know, the budget, the federal budget. But think about all of the, you know, the ways that you can spend $5 oh. billion that would actually do good for America and for Americans, you know, feeding starving children, going to school infrastructure, paying teachers you're, better, you're, gun you're, control research. Yeah, but I mean, here, okay, here, here's part of the problem. Let, let's, let's attack a couple of those, okay? Um, one of the problems why people don't, I, I'll give you an example, why people don't agree with gun control. I, and I'm going to, I'm going to leave that for a couple minutes, but let's go in a couple. If you built a wall, okay. in the in places that you, that need some physical security, you build the wall and, and it, it, and people feel protected, you know? So one of the problems that is happening, especially in Arizona is that there's a lot of property damage. And that that's a big argument that that say, hey, listen, you know, we need some protection here on the border. Okay, let's say you 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 build a couple of barriers. Number two, what you you offer that, and then that at least here here's one of the issues behind it. When you have exclusion classes, and this is what I go back to, you have an exclusion class. Mm -hmm. One of the exclusion classes is that there are voters that are actually suffering, especially in the border states, in New Mexico, in Arizona, um, in Texas, and all them, they're actually suffering because illegals are doing damage to their, to, you know, to their way of life. So what they're saying is, hey, look, we need some, we need some help. Let's just give us some help. And, you know, mm-hmm. when you have Nancy Pelosi lives in the second or third richest zip code in America and says, no, you don't. You don't need help. Well, that, that, creates, that creates a wedge. So that becomes a wedge issue. Now, now, number two is infrastructure. Infrastructure is something we need, but here, here's one of the, the problems with how you go about it. Every state needs different infrastructure. So I'll give you an, an example. In Arizona, New Mexico, um, no, I'm going to pick that. Uh, um, in Arizona, New Mexico, parts of Texas, and um, California, you don't get potholes. And the reason is because it doesn't freeze. The, you, you know, the reason you get potholes in, in parts of the north is that you, you know, water absorbs into the... The, the, the concrete, bay, yeah, and it and freezes. Expands, and expands, mm-hmm. and, and bam. Um, in the city of Charlotte only has, you know, for example, Charlotte, North Carolina has one or maybe two snow plows. So each state has to have different infrastructures. And that's one of the, the things that, that you have to accommodate for. 
so the problem is with it is that different states need this maybe you know maybe give that money to the governors and say hey this is what you need let's fix this um the next one is what was the next one you said before gun control education um education yeah, school well infrastructure and okay. better school infrastructure one of the one of the issues that people are having is common core now the common mm. core and, and part of it is um I don't know if Common Core works or doesn't, but the No Child Left Behind is one of the issues. The second part of this is in the education system is people have, there, there's a, a, a premise. Now, I don't know if it's worthwhile or not worthwhile, but the, the premise is that, you know, liberals have taken over the education system instead of teaching, you know, instead of teaching, um, you know, how to do math, we're teaching about gender studies and you know and one of the problems that it has to have on on both sides in order to get better conversations is the left and the right need to police their own um this this i i i can't even put this into words but I, because so i'm going to use the article itself this anti-lgbt pastor just now and i want to bring his name up because i want to make sure i get it right um he is um let's see what he did oh i i saw that he's adopting a, a, a gop something or another for the teachers right for the i can't oh no 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 no, no 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 this okay. is um this guy is a um uh let's see what he did um so he is a and i gave pastor called paul shooting victim scum um, was busted for using prostitute, prostitutes and gambling. So this guy by the name of uh, Donnie Romero of Steadfast Baptist Church um, is, they called him scum. He was uh, just busted in his church for sleeping with prostitutes, marijuana possessions, and gambling. So one of the things that happens is that, you know, we need to have the left and the right police their own. For example, that 11-year-old transgender kid, I'm sorry, he's not 11. The 11-year-old cross-dresser kid that is gay, that is dancing in front of men, that shit needs to stop. You you cannot have a conversation with that because that becomes the focal point. Um, and, you know, and here's the other issue. When you have Dennis Hastert, the Speaker of the House, raping boys, um, that shit needs to stop too. We need to, you know, we. I don't. I don't know what we need to do, but we need to have. Um, we need to police our own, and it doesn't matter what side it's on. It, you know, l let's put it out there: pedophilia. Anytime you do anything that vile or stupid, um, start killing people. I, I mean, seriously. Yep. They, and and. Yep. Because you. I agree you, with that wholeheartedly. Yes. Because. I do. because and, and you should not have a kid, who's eleven years old, doing that. Part of the other, and part of the other debate also has to do with the. I, I'm going to say this, and I, I'm going to I'm going to preface this, and I'm going to explain something. One of the problems has been in America is we've never had a national identity, and part of the reason is this is going to be a very complicated uh, thing I'm about to say. But I know, I, but. Part of the argument has been, since the beginning, we've never had a, a national identity. We don't say, what is it like to be American, mostly because it's a melting pot. We, and, don't, we don't have a culture. Yeah, and here's one of the arguments. If you're going to say America is a Christian nation, which for the most part it has been, it's, it's a Judeo-Christian, but here's the thing, you look the other way when we had slaves, you look the other way when we used to be able to sell women as chattel property, you look the other way when we were, you know, killing Indians, I, I, I'm not talking about taking their land, which I'm okay with that, honestly, you know, but when you're killing your own citizens who are Indian, I have an issue with that. If you're going to tell me that they're, they're, they're American citizens, but you're killing them, or you're sterilizing them up until 1972, I have a pretty big, I have an issue with that. Um, and, you know, because I don't mind, you know, listen, I, I mean, I want to take back Constantinople, but at the but here's the argument with that. If you can't say that we've always been this when we've had 
let's say, actions that are counter to that. Follow me? Uh, sort of. I You lost me right there, but... Okay. When you're saying that if oh, you... Oh, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So, I, so you, you mentioned this earlier. Yeah, you. if you yeah. say that you're... Um, you're you, you, no one knows what... If you ask somebody, no one knows... When you say, I'm an American, I, no, no one knows what that means. That means, yep. Because here's the thing. We've taken... One of the things that America does, it, liquidate, it liquidates cultures. So I'll mm-hmm. give you an example. Okay. Um, what nationality is your, your husband? Italian, right? Uh, he's Ir- Irish Italian. Okay. Let's just pick the Italians for a reason, for a second. Mm-hmm. And in, in New York City in 19, I, I think it was either 53 or 54, there was 40 blocks of Little, <laughs> of little Italy. Now it's down to two. Why? Well, mostly because the sons of the Italians went out, became doctors, they became businessmen, they became lawyers, they became professionals. You didn't, so they went into the suburbs. They moved out. They didn't have to need in that, in that society to stay there. Um, Beacon Hill and Boston, in, in different places where there were Irish enclaves, and there still are, they, don't get me wrong, there's still Italian enclaves here in Columbus, there's Italian, you know, all over, but they didn't need that tribal protection to, to, to be able to survive. And it, within, you know, two generations, at, you know, nobody in his, I, I guarantee you, very few people in his family still speak Italian. It, 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 oh, no, I don't, I don't think anybody in his family speaks Italian. And, and so that's one of the things that happens is that you start wiping away cultures. Um, it, it, mm-hmm. It's the same thing with, I have a lot of Jewish friends. Very few of them still speak Hebrew. Now, they might, you know, even Yiddish, you know, they know a couple words here, a couple words there. But for the most part, they don't even go to the temple except for the high holidays. Same with the Italians. I mean, I remember, and this is not that long ago, 40 years ago, I remember where on Sundays all the you know the Catholic churches were packed with Italians. Today, not as much. So in in forty short years, you know cultures get eroded. That's what America does, and it doesn't matter what culture you, whether you're you're you know Irish, Greek, German. Um, at the beginning of World War One or towards in 1917, there was 700 German newspapers. Well, that that gets eradicated. And so, you know, it's very hard in your culture to... Whatever America is, it just absorbs the good, throws out the bad, and moves on. That That's what it does. Now, the problem with that is that we have a, a, we have a crisis of identity in the United States. We're like a, you know, we're like a... Um, a 15 year old schoolgirl trying to you know to figure out what she's going to wear next week and and that's and, and that's and that's where we are today because we don't know you know you take a look at at who the democrats have elected some of those people that the democrats have put in office are just batshit crazy some of the republicans that have been put in office are batshit crazy so we don't know what you know, we used to think we knew what the GOP stood for. We used to think we knew what the Democrats... Well, you can... No, I, no, I think you can absolutely take a look at the GOP and the Democratic Party of, of, of in the House and absolutely see what they stand for. I mean, if you... The, the, the Republican Party is all... They're all white men and... You say that, gay. but here... But here, let me ask you this. In the last 2016 election, and, and, and riddle me this... You had in the you had in the you had a black candidate for GOP. You had a, a white. You had a female candidates. The and the Democrats had two white males and a female. It, you think that they you you say that, but it's not as common as there. Now the problem has been sure in the, in the, in the House of Representatives. Yes, you've had a, a more wider. In wider group of people that have been elected to the House GOP, I mean to the House Democratic Solution. You, you, there's no doubt about that. There, there, there are. But if you take a look at the leadership of the, you know, of both parties, same thing. I, I mean, there, there, there are. 
they're they're not that far apart because look who's leading the the Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi. You know what? I, I mean, seriously, you you think about. I always look at leadership, not you know. Don't take a look at the troops. Look at the at, the, at you know the leader, the commanders. And, well, and the, I think it, but I think I still think it speaks volumes how, and I'm specifically talking about the House. I'm not talking about the Senate. I'm talking right. about the House. But we have, we just had the first Muslim elected to Congress, the first Native American. No, no, woman no, no, in no, 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 no. Not the first. What are you Mus- talking about? No. Who's the, who's the, the first? House, who's the, the first? House? Yes. No, she, he's not. She's not the first Muslim. Well, okay, Obama. No, who is the first Muslim that was elected to Congress? Are you talking yeah. about a congressman or congresswoman? Now, if you want to say congresswoman, yeah, I, Keith Ellison was the first Muslim who was elected to Congress. Are you saying the first okay. Muslim female? Muslim female, yes. Yeah, okay. Elected that, that, to that, Congress, that, yes. Okay, and that, then we also had the first uh, Native American woman. Um, the first openly bisexual woman elected to Congress. Um, what was the other one? There was oh, there was another one, and I can't think of what it is. But if you if you look at specifically at the faces of the GOP and the Democratic Party, and I'm not talking about policy, I'm talking specifically look at their diversity. You can and that speaks volumes about where America is headed and where it should be going. You know, the 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 GOP has primarily predominantly been white males. And white females. Yeah, but the first American, ever- first Native American congressman is Tom Cole and uh, Mark Wayne Mullen, who are both re- Republicans from Oklahoma. So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm just, I, I, I'm, I, I don't think. Are, are you saying the first Native American women or first Native American? Yes. Okay. Women. Yes. Okay. Yes. But and that that happened this year in the House of Representatives. First female Muslim, first female Native American, first female openly bisexual. There was another one, and I can't remember what her um, I, identity was. But um, and this is all part of the Democratic Party, and and it's gotten it's gone from specifically the, the Democratic Party has gone from white males to. Now it is so diverse, and it it represents the majority of America because I I, I don't okay I'm not going to say it represents the majority of America. It represents a different cross culture of America because it, you know let let's say that. Well, okay. Here's um, I'll bring this up. Uh, male and female, just male and female, who makes up the majority in America. Um, as the last census, it's 51.6% are female in America. Exactly. So you look at the GOP party and you say... Decide what I can do with my body or can't do with my body. Yeah, and but I mean, part of, but, but part of that, but part of that issue has been with the you know the abortion debate if that's what you want to talk about Mm -hmm. um you know public opinion on abortion debate hasn't changed since 1972 it it hasn't i I mean you can you can say it has but the the only thing is is change is the wording because i mean (sighs) i I mean seriously it 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 hasn't Mm -hmm. that the 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 approval and disapproval of the of of whatever you want to call about Roe versus Wade it hasn't really changed that much since 1972, and 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 that's and, a, and that's a big argument. I, I think what has changed is okay. So so I don't I don't care what you do with your body. I don't necessarily agree with it, and I would never personally do it. And if you have, I'm not going to judge you for it. And that I think is what changed. So you you know maybe the public opinion has been I don't agree with abortion, but at the same time. Do you not agree and then not care what other people do? Because that right there is a huge difference. You can. Well, I, you- I think here here's part of the problem. Okay, and and I'll tell you this. Let's. Let, I'm, I'm going to bring up inclusion and exclusion classes again. Okay. One one of the groups and and one of the problems that you have in with the the abortion debate. And I hate to, to bringing this up. I, and it's one of those. I know, things. and I'm sorry. Uh, but, I know. but 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 no, but it, it has to be talked about. The reason you have abortion in this country is the right to privacy, okay? 
and and the term behind it is called body autonomy. Now, one of the guys that I despise in this debate is a guy by the name of Ben Shapiro. Now, okay, I, I just I can't I, I can't stand the guy. I, I laugh. I I know I. I, 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 I mean, laugh because when I when I started getting into politics, I learned about Ben Shapiro, and he was my hero. And now I just I feel the same way. I can't. Okay. I, I just, I, so <laughs> there, I, I'm going to give you a little bit of knowledge. Please pass this on to next time you get into the abortion debate. Okay. Okay. I tr- will. Tr- tr- trust me on this. Okay. So, the Catholic Church has the the Catholic Church had a a cutoff for uh, abortion. It was called. It was 168 days. Okay, that's 24 weeks. Okay, that was called the quickening. Okay, now prior to the the Roe versus Wade and the pill, there was very few debates on abortion because. And here's part of the other problem: rich people are always going to be able to get an abortion. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who where. Um, part of the the debate has been it's it's control. It has nothing to do with. And 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 I, I hate, my God, I hate this. But part of the reason is that we want to control women, and mm-hmm. and that has been one of the debates about abortion. Um, the second part of about abortion has nothing to do whether it's a human life. That has that is immaterial in the argument. There's a term called body autonomy. So one of the reasons that a a a pregnant female has the right to terminate the pregnancy or, or or to keep it the term is because she has body autonomy that was the basis behind roe versus wade is a woman's right to privacy she can do what she wants the argument of saying that it's a human life at conception or at, at some it, that's that's not a, a part of the argument people try to sneak in that premise oh it's a human life no no one is arguing that it's not it's just saying I have the right to do what I, you know, I have the right to do what I want. Now, do I think abortion is icky personally? Yeah, I think it's a little icky, but at the same time, do I want your kid to grow up to be, you know, whatever? Do you want, if you are not able to take care of your child, and he will suffer and he will do, you know, be a bad actor, I, I'd rather not have him here. That's fine. And at 168, well, no, but here's here's the thing. Even the Catholic Church said at 168 days, you don't, we don't want you killing, you know, we don't want you to to kill the the the, the fetus. And so the, now, the reason is, now this is part two, which nobody, this is part again cognitive dissonance, and critical thinking. At 168 days, one of the things that develops is the is the lower hippocampus now um one it, it and in 1979 this is another p- bit of history nobody wants to bring this up either there is a thing called the uniform death act okay and we up until then we could not we as, as a nation could not agree what death was did you know that hmm. i did not i was so, not even alive Yes, I know. So I know, and I, I didn't adopt. I didn't adopt you till much later. So, um, but up until 1979, and and, I, and when you get a chance, to read about this. This is why it's important in the debate. Okay. In the Uniform Death Act, it had levels of what was considered cognitive brain function. Okay. Now, people are going to argue all sorts of things. They're going to go semantics, and, and they want to. What they want to do is try to to get you on. Um, they want to sneak in premises like all oh, you know life begins at a conception. Yeah, no, no one says that, but it's like saying I'm going to put I'm going to put brownies in the oven for five minutes and they're going to come out and it's going to be a brownie. No, you you have to have certain things. Now, according to the CDC and the American Medical Associations, 38 percent of all pregnancies. Um, stop an abortion, and they're called miscarriages or simultaneously abortions. Did you know that? I didn't. No. It's a very Did high. You? It's a very high number. The amount of you know what the the, the body you know there. It's a very high number. Now they're ve- now uh, miscarriages and the what they call spontaneous abortions, where you know the body just um, terminates Rejects the fetus. Yeah. It, 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 they're very high. It's it's over a third of all pregnancies happen that way. So move on. The 
I, I, and I didn't know that either, and, 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 it's, and it's very troubling. So the Uniform Death Act said this is what life is. This is where you know, a person can stay on, on life support, not on life support, you know, brain function is done. And that also correlates, and, and it, there, it's about the same standard as 24 weeks in a fetus. That's why late-term abortions have to be so, they, they have to be so specific that y- there's got to be a compelling reason to end the pregnancy. Hmm. So that is what is not debated. No one brings that up into debate. So when people say, oh, life begins a concept, I'm like, sure, fine. I haven't, okay, fine. I'll concede that point. Next. What else you got? You know? <laughs> And, and because that that's what that you know that's what the the argument is it's a logical fallacy and that's what Ben Shapiro uses and that is one of the reasons why that he's able to you you know to to sneak in premises my my whole thing is look if you want to be able to have that because let me let me tell you what body autonomy leads to or doesn't lead to if i kill you and if I, if there's no body autonomy in a, in a society, guess what goes next? I'm going to be able to kill you and harvest your organs and give them to somebody that needs them. <laughs> the, that is the, that is the basic premise of of abortion. Now, people are, are are you know, and if you're listening here, I know people are going like, oh, that I swear to God, it's just you know, no, that that is the <laughs> argument, and, and and the the problem that people have with this is they never studied it. They, they just want to and fo- that's, well that is one of the reasons why I say that it's it's an education issue like we keep coming back to these main topics and the differences between the GOP and the Democrats Democrats is, is that is about education nobody takes the time to really understand or to study it and then they're spoon fed what well, their but, parents are but fed, but, but here here here's the thing the left I, I, and okay let, let's you're right about that, but here here's some of the arguments of the left. There's 72 genders. Come on, fucking Brenda. No, there's not. There's two. <laughs> Come on. There, there's two genders. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, you can't tell me that it's just on the right. It, it, it's People ignore science when it behooves them. I'll give you an example the other day. Um, I got into it with, with someone. Um, I said, I don't believe in global warming. Now. Let, and before you say that, there's reasons for it. The number one reason I don't believe in global warming is because I work in the industry. I, I, I work as a recycler. I stop, I stop, um, you know, I stop, uh, what do you call it, e-waste from hitting the water supply. I, I want to make sure that it doesn't, you know, you, your kids, do, you know, don't drink um water and become you know and become physically ill and they start you know growing up to be roll tide fans i i I don't want them to do that but here's the thing and when i said i i had so oh you just don't care no i study this this is part of my business i have fed my family because i know understand global warming and and i and i deal with multiple governments and ngos that have come to me and said, hey, listen, how do we stop this from hitting the the environment? Um, one of the pe- people that is one of my customers or one of my clients was the the, the government of I- the Ivory Coast. I sat there and told them, here's how you stop. You know, this is how you follow the basal cords. This is how you do this. This is how you stop some of this from hitting the water and releasing CO2 emissions. And they implemented it. And they're, they're making, they're stopping it. And I've had people on the left say, "Oh my God, you're just a, you're just a, a, a right wing, you know, nut job." I'm like, "Okay, what what is the absorption rate of CO2 in a nitrogen atmosphere?" Oh, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you know, but and and that is the the other problem we got. It's not that people are. It's education. It's saying, "Hey, listen, there are people that have that know what they're doing." And mind you, I've had the left and the right, or I've argued with both of them on things that I've actually put money, I, I put money in my in- pocket. Right. And, and right. here, here's the, the other part. That I, and we got 15 minutes left, I, and let's finish <laughs> it up on the one, that, the, the debate that none, none of us can agree on, the gun debate. Okay. 
<laughs> one of the reasons you have the gun debate is neither side will tell the truth. Now, well, the other the there's another part to that too. The truth. What is the truth? We don't have the funding, and nobody will fund the research to find the truth. Well, they do. Issue. They do, but it, part of the you know the problem with the CDC is. And, and the, one of the reasons that the, the CDC is not getting funded, and, and I'll tell you the reason behind it, is part of it is they, they, they feared the weaponization of government entities because they did that with the IRS under Obama. They did it with the EPA under Bush. They, they've done it with other agencies under each president has weaponized certain aspects of the government, and they don't trust it. Because I'll give you an example. Here, here you you want the, the truth about gun control? Sure, if you know it. <laughs> I, I do because I've done I've done I, I've done uh, data sets on this. Okay. Um, gun laws do not affect crime up or down. That's a secret. Hmm. And, and and no one wants to admit that it, it's a wedge issue. So I'll give you an example. The most restrictive the most restrictive gun laws in the United States. Do you know what, what state they're in? I'm going to either guess Chicago, Illinois, or California. Nope. What? Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, okay. So they have a relatively uh, low crime rate. Uh, their gun crime is absolutely in the, in the top it's now it's climbing a little bit but it, for the for the most years they were one of the safest um they were one of the safest cities in America and they have pretty restrictive gun laws uh Connecticut is second now guess who leads the United States in gun crime don't tell me i know this cuz i just looked this up it's like a state it's a city that you wouldn't expect to be it's not chicago nope but i i'll help you because uh it's the two gun, the two, the three most violent gun crime cities in America are Flint, Michigan, East mm-hmm. Saint, East Saint Louis, and New Orleans. In New Orleans, you can go buy a gun, put it on your hip as long as you pass a background check and you're not blocked. Put it on your hip, walk out of the store with it on your hip, and they and they lead to country in same day, same day, and they lead to mm-hmm. the states in gun crime. Now. The, the problem is that the, the states that have, um, that, that can put people into uh, mental health homes without, uh, w- with, they, if you can, incar- not, the, the right term is an incarcerate, but if you can put people in, into a mental health institution against their will, have the lowest amount of gun crime. So literally guns aren't the issue um there are states that have restrictive gun laws and have low crime restrictive gun laws and have high crime there are states that have loose gun laws and have low crime states that have loose gun laws and have you know high crime and low crime and so the the problem is it's not the gun laws it's it's the so for example here's one of the things that that this the debate i don't want open carry in new york city i don't want uh, some yahoo going down you know, Times Square with an AR-15 strapped on, go, uh, my g- guns, God, freedom, and no, I, I don't want that. Um, at the same time, in, in all the cities I've ever traveled in the United States, the most armed, um, open carry city I've ever been is is Chandler, Arizona, relatively low gun crime. So, I I, I I've seen more open carry in that city than anywhere else, and one of the the reasons for it is. It, it, it's it's part of the culture. So what works in Portland, Oregon, might not work in St. Louis, and vice versa. So right. the, the problem is that, that you know, and the idea that a good guy with a gun is is the answer. Um, if a good guy with a gun stopped a bad guy with a gun, um, the safest places on the planet would be war zones. You know, but that's not what happens. So I think the issue has to be that we address and say, hey, listen. You can't get the guns, but how do we stop the crazy people from getting the guns? And and that's and that's the debate. That's that is what the debate needs to be. But the left wants to grab all the guns, and the only people that they, you know, here's the thing. And that's only and that's 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 another identity politics. That's only to please right. their base because most of their base are minorities who are dying by guns. Right, and but but but. 
but here, here's the thing. If you take a look at where, you know, gun crime is happening, um, the difference is it's not minorities, honey. This is where the lie lays. It, it's if you take, take absence of color, okay? Mm-hmm. Poor white people, poor Hispanics, poor blacks, um, they, the, the, the crime rates are all the same. It, the it, percentages or the numbers? Bo- both, percentages and numbers. If you're poor in America, you act the same, whether you're mm. black, you're white, yeah, okay. you're Hispanic. I missed that part. You know, if you're, if you're poor, yeah. if, if, you're one, you know, if you live in mm-hmm. poverty, and it doesn't matter whether, it, absent, take away the color. If you take a look and, and you start putting up numbers, um, there's no difference. And, and, the right. re- and poverty is what leads to... It's not at, it's not poverty, but it's it's a certain it's abject poverty leads to crime. Here's the difference. This is this is what's very difficult to understand. Rural pro- poverty and and up until you the only difference between rural poverty and whatever you want to call it um, urban poverty is. The the the, mur- the murder rates are higher for the same crimes. That that is that is the difference. In in the cities as opposed to to rural areas. Yeah, if you take a look it's at higher. It, it, well, because that has everything to do with population too. Right? No, no, no. Um, if you are, what I'm saying is, if you go into, um, like. For example, if if you take a look at crime in an urban population, um, they're just deadlier. That that's it. They're, you know, but the crime rates between a poor white person in southern Ohio and a poor black person in, say, you know, pick a in in rural Mississippi, they're about the same. When you start putting in demographics of cities where urban areas, that's where that that. That's where it changes, is that that er- those areas just become deadlier, and they're absent of color as well. Um, there's a lot of people that in you know we're in in, in Columbus, Ohio, uh, we're an anomaly because we have uh, poor inner city white ghettos. Now the the areas that we have here are relatively high in in, in murder rates as well. That is. That is where the you know the problems, that that's where the outliers are, and one of the the things that nobody is bringing forward is that maybe you know we need to address those issues, and we don't because they're wedge issues. Um, and the same thing is I don't want somebody in downtown L.A. open carrying. I I, I think that's stupid. Right. Or in some you know, and here here's the thing that I, I tell people: if you you know, both of us are Marines. Mm-hmm. And all right, um, and if we're in a in a Starbucks and a guy comes in with a you know let's say uh, an AR-15 in condition one or two, how much time do you have before you start thinking is this guy an active shooter, or is this guy a you know Second just, Amendment advocate? Yeah. yeah, Second Amendment advocate. You got about point six seconds, and this mm-hmm. has happened in, in numerous places before where you know concealed carry guys have opened up on each other and and I, and I think that you know that is the debate that you need to have is where where do you put this so where do you have an honest broker in this debate so we can we can fix some of the problems um so you, it, you 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 brought up and I, i'm going to touch on this really quick before we have to get off here is that you you said that the that there's a correlation between low crime rates and the ability to admit mental patients without their consent. It, the the states in the United States that have the lowest gun crime are states mm-hmm. that you can't put a person that is a mental has a mental defect into an institution against their will. That is insane to me, and I have never. I, Ever it, heard that correlation? Yeah, this is what I had a master's in, and, I, and, I, and this is what I wrote on it. This is why I, on, on public policy, and I say this, and people are like, "Oh my God, Emma Mola Lavelle, you come and get my everybody." No, everybody shouldn't own a gun. 
that, that, that's a, and and but that is the problem. And if you look that up, states that yeah. that that can put mental, you know, that people that have they're called mental defects into an institution against their will have lower gun crime. So I I don't I, I'm sure you remember this, but uh, a few months ago in my hometown in Louisville, Kentucky, where I'm from, there was a, a guy who had been in and out of mental institutions, and he shot two black people at a Kroger. Yeah. Do you remember this? This was this yeah. was really recent. This was right down the street from my mother's house, and that was absolutely that was inconceivable to me because he he. Yeah, and not and, only was he a racist, but he he was in, he had already been in and out of mental institutions, and he still was able to. Right, and and the problem is, it's the same thing with that that seven year old that just got killed in Texas. Um, people mm-hmm. came out and said it was a you know racially charged, and it wasn't. It was a, a another black gentleman, um, two black kids that or young black youths um, that opened up on on and killed the seven-year-old and people were like oh it's another hate crime and and here here's the the thing i want to close up on Mm -hmm. i think one of the things that we need to stop in this country and and as a whole and and which is whether you're on the left or you're on the right you need to engage people and say hey listen maybe this argument would be better if we say what can we agree on because what different you know what what unites us is much more than what divides us. And say instead of saying, "Hey, listen, I, I don't, I, I don't agree with that." Okay, what can we agree on? Well, nobody mm-hmm. wants nobody wants active shooters. I, I don't want an active shooter. I don't want to. I don't want to gun up America. I don't want to put guns at every corner. Um, I want to be able to have, you know. Now, mind you, one of the reasons we have the the Americans have had a lot of you know people want to have a lot of guns is we have a fucking crazy government and you, <laughs> and, and honestly that is one of the reasons why people are so um willing to say no we want to keep the guns because to them it's freedom and if you didn't have such draconian policies by some people in government i i think you'd have a better you know a better uh, argument and, and that's and that's one of the problems so somewhere in the middle we need to find you know common ground i agree with that wholeheartedly but it's easier said than done <laughs> well it should be it shouldn't be i mean at the end of the day you know we the only i mean if we can agree on that jody is never a good thing i think we can agree on the rest of us <laughs> fucking jody <laughs> yeah Anyway, it's always a pleasure arguing with you uh, or debating you or whatever. Um, but um, any final thoughts? Uh, no, actually. I'm, we talked about a lot today, surprisingly. Thanks for having me again. Uh, did you learn anything? I did. I learned quite a few things. Thank you. Now, so one of the things that, like I said, it goes back to is that you need to, to have – when you have honest, when you have an honest debate and you're not screaming at each other, you can actually learn from the opposition or from people that have different views on you because you're actually discussing things, not arguing. So, and with that, I appreciate you coming on. I will, um, we will talk another time. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Simplify, young lady. <laughs> Bye. Good night. And with that, um, Backwards Veterans is on next. Thank you for listening to the Veteran Radio Syndicate. I hope you guys learned something. Um, This is George Pardos, and we'll see you next time. It's time. It's time for the Bear News with George Pardos.